So one of the questions that I get asked pretty regularly on my channel is how to beat the hunters on floor 100 of Summit. Now, I know there's plenty of build videos out there showing people beating the hunters solo or in a group. And a lot of them, you know, involve some gimmicks or maybe a play style that you're not comfortable with or maybe something that you're just not good at doing. You know, there's a lot of builds that specifically focus on something like snipers and getting a bunch of headshots and never missing that headshot and basically just timing it perfectly and not getting hit and being able to just take out the hunters in a very unattainable manner for a lot of players. Now, if you're newer to the game or you just have really struggled with the hunters for some unknown reason, maybe your, you know, your builds are just not quite up to par, that's kind of what I'm, I'm looking to help you with. I don't want this to be, you have to run this kind of thing, but I believe that these builds will give you maybe the highest chances or at least highest likelihood of being able to survive through the hunters. Now they may not be the fanciest, they may not be the flashiest, they may not be the most impressive, but the goal is to keep you alive. The goal is to counter the strengths of the hunters. So it may not be an extremely fast method, but it can be a very successful method. Now the hunters main two areas of success are the fact that they can constantly disrupt you and they have a large amount of damage themselves. The best ways to counter these are with protection from elites and disrupt resistance. Now, to my knowledge, there are only two builds that can reach the protection from elites cap and the disruption resistance cap. I will be showing you both of these. And then I'll be showing you a third one that's probably just a better all around build, even if it doesn't quite reach one of the caps. Now, one of the important things to talk about is just the shade watch. If you don't have, you know, a maxed out shade watch, obviously you are hurting yourself. I know not everyone has the time, and if you are still playing the game, odds are that you're probably fairly new and you haven't reached it yet. For a lot of builds, you are going to need a maxed out watch just because, you know, people rely on it now for having the max crit chance, max, you know, crit damage, max headshot damage, all that stuff. The first build I'm going to show you doesn't need the watch, but obviously it would still be a great thing to have if, you know, you can get it. Now, the reason we're not going to need it is because we're going to be able to reach max uh, disrupt resistance just on our gear alone. Now, I am going to be cringing while I say this because, look, I I've told you guys on the channel numerous times, I do not like three pieces. There's some that can be okay, but generally there's some sort of gimmick involved. And the gimmick with this one, at least why it's okay now, is because I'm trying to only deal with hunters. That's the sole purpose of this build, and that's all it's designed for. So the thing that you probably need to know is that System Corruption is a DZ exclusive set. And of course, that turns off a lot of people instantly. Honestly, the DZ is not as difficult to extract from as many people think. And if you're just avoiding the area because you think it's toxic, I understand. Now, if no matter what I say, you know, it doesn't matter, you're just not going to, you know, get System Corruption, whatever. Don't worry, there are still some other ideas that I've got for you that you can basically get this exact same setup. But this is the first thing that I want to cover. So the system corruption obviously gives me 40% disrupt resistance. Now, if I have 10% hazard protection on all of my rolls, that will give me 60% hazard protection. And then the 40% disrupt resistance will end up giving me 100% disrupt resistance. Now, when I combine it with the chill out mask and two improvised pieces, I do get a total of six mod slots. Now with those six mod slots, I can use that to fill up my protection from elites. Now at five mod slots, I will end up having 60% protection from elites. I throw on another one, and if it's 12%, I'll have 72%. When I combine that with the 10% from the survivalist specialization, I'm going to end up getting the max cap of 80%. Now, if you had 13% protection from elite mods, you would actually be at 77. Now, if that was the case, you probably don't need survivalist specialization anymore. Just, you know, only getting out 3% more. I wouldn't really say it's worth it. I'd and to be honest, you know, again, this is going to be kind of up to you. If you don't want the 80%, the 80% is not that important to you. Uh, you'd rather have the Artificer Hive with the Technician Specialization and the additional skill tier. I fully understand that would be a great idea as well. Because, of course, the entire goal here is to have a shield that's constantly repairing itself, that's staying alive, you know, just throughout the entire hunter encounter, and they can't disrupt it. That is the goal. You're not going to be doing a ton of damage, but they won't be able to kill you either as long as you, you know, just kind of 
avoid letting them get behind you. Now, what I do recommend is any additional rolls that you have. I would suggest rolling it in uh, armor regeneration, just because, I mean, the three rolls of some sort of crit aren't going to do really anything for you. Um, I, I think armor regen would probably just be the best in the slot, because you're not really going to have any healing skills, especially if you're using the Artificer. And depending on the modifiers that you have, if you have any, uh, you know, running a healing skill might not be in the cards for you because it'll just take down your shield every time you try to use it. For that reason, I just say, you know, just Armor Regen is probably going to be the best in the slot in addition to your Hazard Protection. But remember, you need 100% Hazard Protection or at least 100% Disrupt Resistance to stop the Disrupt from the Hunters. Now, okay, I think you need like 96% or 95%, I think there's a soft cap that's below 100%, so you don't necessarily need 100%, I, I think, but I'm not entirely sure on what the number is, so I'm just going to tell you, aim for 100%. Now, the second method of this is pretty much the exact same idea, except instead of using the system corruption, you're going to be using three pieces of Eclipse Protocol. Now, the advantage of using Eclipse Protocol is, one, it's easily available. You don't need to go into the DZ or anything to get it. Instead of 40% disrupt resistance, though, you're going to be getting 30% hazard protection. This means that to get the max hazard protection, or at least max disrupt resistance, you're going to need hazard on each piece, so that would be 60%. You're going to need the 30% from the close protocol, and then that'll bring you up to 90%. Now, this is where the watch comes in extremely handy. If you want to reach that protection from elite cap still, you're going to need the 10% from the watch. If you do not have that watch, you're going to need to put on a 10% disrupt resistance mod on, on one of the pieces. And that, of course, is going to reduce your protection from elites. Again, I, I'd strongly recommend having armor regen in any spaces that it's available. But if you did get everything in the way that you need it to, you would end up having 100% hazard protection. So not just disrupt resistance, you would have 100% resistance to all status effects. So that makes this build a little bit better but you also need the watch a lot more. And if you have everything rolled perfectly, you still can get to that 80% protection from elites cap. Now again, if you wanted to go with the technician and the artificer and lose 10% protection from elites, which may be totally worth it for you, and I do think that the artificer just makes it a better all-around build for different encounters, but, you know, that's entirely up to you. You can go with the artificer, you can go with the survivalist, whatever you want. I just wanted to, again, show you how to get these max caps. Now, the third way that I'm going to show you cannot reach both caps at the same time. You can get 80% protection from elites, or you can get 100% disrupt resistance. That's entirely up to you, whichever one you want to choose. This is because if you get, let's say, all six hazard protection rolls, you get 60%. You get 10% from the watch, you're at 70 Well, while the first gear set had 40% uh, disrupt resistance, the second one had 30% hazard protection, you can only get 20% hazard protection from the brand sets here. So that's 10% from Cheska and 10% from Yal. Now that will give you 90% hazard protection. So to get the 100% disrupt resistance, you're going to need a 10% disrupt resistance mod. This of course will remove some of your protection from elites. But overall, unlike the other two builds, you can get a lot more diversity out of this build than you could the other ones. The other ones are entirely dedicated to hazard protection, disrupt resistance, and protection from elites. This build can allow you to add more rolls because obviously, you know, the gear sets only have two slots, whereas the high ends have three. So that makes it a little bit easier to get some extra, you know, buffs on your build. You can add extra regen, you can add extra crit chance, you can add talents, and that's obviously one of the biggest advantages, the fact that you actually get your talents back. So you're losing a little bit, but you are getting those talents. Now, personally, if I was going with this kind of build, which I'm still putting together, the, the one negative of this build is that it really does take a long time to put together. Um, it, it really depends on the luck of the rolls. Now, you could change out your Yal gear for a, another improvised piece. You are just going to have to use a, uh, another Disrupt Resistance mod in there. And you'll still get the 100%. The so in case you really, really didn't want to go into the DZ to even get one piece, you can still do it with an improvised piece. Now, the reason that I say this is kind of difficult, right? Getting the improvised pieces can be annoying, but once you get them, I mean, you can use them for a lot of different things. And you don't really need to worry about anything specifically. If, if I was just, let's say I was rolling these improvised pieces, I know I need to have shield health. Well, if I want 
you know, I, I can basically get that with either armor or skill tier. So if I get a yellow or a blue, it doesn't really matter so much. Um, that'll work. I just need to have, you know, something close to max with hazard protection or armor regen. And then I can just roll the other one on there and have the piece that I want, right? I don't, I don't necessarily need, um, you know, 170k armor on that piece. You know, if I get a roll with 100, 100k or 120k, like, I'll just be like, fine, whatever, as long as I've got the hazard protection and the armor region. And then, of course, you can just optimize it, you know, a little bit if you really need to. And even the chill-out mask isn't really that difficult to get. Obviously, it has, it comes with armor, so that's a win. And then you just roll hazard protection onto it. Pretty simple. Now, the difficult one comes with Cheska Varoba. Now, personally, I would want kinetic momentum, maybe vigilance. You know, it really depends. I'd want a little bit of extra damage on this build and a little bit of extra survivability. But the, again, the problem comes in with the fact that Cheska is a, a red build, so it's a firearms build. And generally, it rolls with red stats. So when you find Cheska, the most likely that you're going to find are three red rolls. This makes it incredibly difficult if you want to make them, for example, all three blue rolls with the talent that you want. So while this build generally can be the stronger, more versatile of the three, I would say that it is probably the more time-consuming and difficult to get. Now, even if you are farming non-stop for Cheska Varoba in, you know, Summit or whatever, you know, checkpoint or whatever, and or whatever control point has Cheska Varoba or something, you know, it's still going to take you a long time. You're always going to get a red main, and you're always going to need to change that to armor. So that means that to get the perfect one, you're pretty much going to need a absolute god roll. You know, at the very minimum, you're going to need some really terrible hazard protection, armor uh, regen rolls. I mean, th they can be terrible, and then you're going to have to spend a lot of time optimizing them. And that's if they have the talent that you want. <laughs> so... This one can take a while. Now, you could go with, uh, you know, skill tier on them. You could go with um, something besides armor regen if you're really just like, you know, and I don't, I don't care. But again, you can see where this one in particular is going to be the most difficult. That's why I don't even have it right now. Like, I've got, I've got the setup in place in case I could get those. But I do realize it is going to take an excruciatingly long time to get them perfectly rolled the way that I want. It's going to take a long time to get those talents with hazard protection, with armor regen, and being able to roll armor on there. So, yeah, it's going to be a struggle if you want to get this build, like, maxed out in, in terms of, of fighting the hunters. Now, again, you could just suck it up and just go with, with the firearms. That's not what I recommend because, obviously, the, again, this is not about killing the hunters fast. It's about staying alive. You want a strong shield. You want to be able to keep that shield up, you know, buffed with an artificer or some sort of repair. You know, you, you want some skill tier or some armor. Weapon damage, you can slowly take away the hunters without having a lot of weapon damage, right? They're going to medkit anyway. It's more important that you stay alive. And that's why I just don't recommend just rolling too many weapons damage rolls. It's just not going to be that helpful in this strategy. The strategy is to outlive them, not to DPS them quickly. But thank you guys for watching. I hope I helped you. I hope this gives you some information. You know, like I said, this is probably the the most successful way, at least most guaranteed way of getting some success in fighting the hunters than a lot of other builds. And you know, this doesn't really necessarily and this does not necessarily depend on your skill level. I mean, if you can't get headshots, you know, you don't really have to worry that much. You, I mean, if you can get the occasional one just to repair your shield with liberty, that works. The goal here is getting that protection from elites getting that hazard protection, staying alive, right? That's the goal. That's how you do it. Keep your distance, go slow, and you'll be fine. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.